originally called Decoration Day from the early tradition of decorating graves with flowers, wreaths, and flags. Memorial Day is a day for remembrance and of those who have died in the service to our country. It was first widely observed on May 30, 1868, to commemorate the sacrifices of Civil War soldiers by proclamation of General John A. Logan of the Grand Army of the Republic, an organization of former Union sailors and soldiers. During that first national celebration, former Union General and sitting Ohio Congressman James Garfield made a speech at Arlington National Cemetery. We do not know one promise these men made, one pledge they gave, one word they spoke, but we do know they summed up and perfected by one supreme act, the highest virtues of men and citizens. For love of country, they accepted death and thus resolved all doubts and made immortal their patriotism and their virtue. From everyone here at the Jeep Talk Show, have a very happy Memorial Day while we all remember the soldiers that gave their lives. Hey Jeep Junkies on episode 230, we'll hear more about FCA recalls and how it affects Jeep. Production has halted on Jeep assembly lines and you'll never guess why. We'll be giving shout outs and reading reviews here from the mind of Nikki G. And we're going to tantalize your taste buds with some trail cooking tips from Gina. We've got a review of the Bell Automotive Cargo Net for the Jeep JK. We'll discuss the JK's electronic sway bar disconnect in detail as well. And take some time to identify some stuff on Tammy's rear end. It's all coming up on this week's Jeep Talk Show. LT Wright knives are handcrafted in Ohio with the finest locally sourced materials. They build everything from everyday carry to bushcraft and even overland specific. Everything that LTWK builds comes with a lifetime guarantee and is designed from the ground up to be a solid working knife. Find out more online at ltwrightknives.com. That's L-T-W-R-I-G-H-T knives.com. You're listening to a 4x4, 4x4 Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the G-Talk Show. With Tammy on Wrangler. Tony and Josh on Cherokee. So sit back. Strap in. And brace yourself. First week in G. My Jeepers, normally we'd start the show off this with this week in Jeep, but this is a special week. Unfortunately, we lost a fan of the show and member on our XJTalk.com forum this week. He was, of course, much more than just a Jeep owner. He was a husband and a father. Raymond Smith, also known by his username, Fireman Ray, on the forum, died a few days ago. He was too young. Funeral services for Raymond Thomas Smith, 50 years old, of Livingston, will be held at 2 o'clock p.m. Saturday, May 28, 2016, in Livingston Church of Christ, 1107 West Church Street, Livingston, Texas, 77351. Raymond was born July 4, 1965, in San Diego, California, to marry in the late Milton Smith. He died May 23, 2016, in San Jacinto County. The family will receive friends and loved ones from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Friday, May 27, 2016, in Livingston Church of Christ. In lieu of flowers, please donate to Zach Smith's College Fund, Rebecca Smith's Wedding Fund, or a charity of your choice. Cremation will follow the funeral service. And now, guys, a moment of silence. Remembrance of Raymond Smith, our friend and fellow Jeeper. All right, guys, here we go again. 2015 did no favors for the FCA or Jeep brands with all the recalls that popped up. Well, 2016 might not be much better for either brand with the latest recall out just this week. FCA is recalling over 500,000 Wranglers to inspect the clock spring, a part in the steering wheel that aids with airbag deployment. FCA said in a recent statement that dust and dirt gathered from off-road driving can, quote, compromise the clock spring and eventually prevent <laughs> driver's side airbag deployment in a crash. Oh, well, there's a simple solution to this, guys. All you have to do is just never, ever drive your Jeep off-road again. <laughs> ever. Not happening. Like the- Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> Sounds like the design rejects over there at FCA have their Italian heads shoved up their... <clears throat> All right. Beep. Obviously, the engineers were more focused on Italian design than staying true to off-road heritage. Proof's in the pudding, FCA. 
Wranglers from the 2007 to 2010 model years and the 2011 through 2016 model years only with the right-hand drive on those last year models are the ones affected in this recall. If you guys are worried that you may have a defective clock spring, the number one indication that yours is going bad is when the airbag warning light turns on in the dash, in which case drivers should notify a local dealership as soon as possible. Might be worth a call anyways, just for a little peace of mind. Thankfully, FCA said it's unaware of any injuries or accidents related to the clock spring is issue so far. Discovered the problem following an investigation and what sparked that investigation has not yet been released. So, what's the fix? Well, the automaker said that it will install new steering wheel back covers and steering column shrouds. Well, now, doesn't that sound attractive? Look, Ma, no hands. Or wheels. Or whatever. So it seems my master plan is working perfectly. It appears as if an undetermined source <laughs> has caused a global shortage of steering wheels. I'm not joking, people. And it's disrupting production of the new Jeep Cherokee. And in an unfortunate example of collateral damage also has slowed output of the Grand Cherokee. A third consecutive shift of Cherokee production at Fiat Chrysler to Chrysler's Toledo North assembly plant was canceled Thursday morning, and an afternoon shift there was shortened Tuesday because of the shortage, an FCA spokeswoman confirmed. In addition, the workers in the automo automaker's Jefferson North assembly plant in Detroit, which produces the Grand Cherokee, were sent home early Wednesday after a shortage of steering wheels shut down the whole entire line. Jeep is working with the supplier and will make production decisions for Toledo North on a shift-by-shift -shift basis. Thankfully, production of the Jeep Wrangler, also built in Toledo, remained unaffected. You see, people, strategic implementation of precise plans to achieve global domination. <laughs> All right. I'm supposed to, I'm, Getting a little I'm out of hand to, there. Hold on. I'm supposed to read, read this? Oh, okay. <clears throat> the Cherokee KL introduced in 2013 has become Jeep's number one selling model in the U.S., with the Grand Cherokee the brand's second best selling model, U.S. sales of the Cherokee are flat this year, though April, while Grand Cherokee demand has climbed 9.5%. There, are you people happy? <laughs> FCA announced in a press release that the overall sales shouldn't be affected too terribly much longer, though, as FCA has some cushion in its supply of the Cherokees and Grand Cherokees. On May 1st, FCA had roughly 59,000 unsold Cherokees in its inventory, a 92-day supply, and roughly about 58,000 unsold Grand Cherokees in inventory, which is about an 87-day supply. A 60-day supply is considered optimal, so they've got a little bit of wiggle room. Well, lift kits and warranties. We got this reply, reply from Scott here recently, guys. I, I, beginning of every show, I always tell you guys, if you have a response to any one of our stories, by all means, let us know. Well, Scott did just that. He says, hey, I'll just finish listening to episode 229. Great show as always. I have a little info to share, to the best of my knowledge, regarding lift kits and warranties. I'm a dealership tech at a non-Jeep dealer, but the info applies across the board. Having a lift kit on a vehicle itself won't void warranty. A dealer can get portions of a vehicle removed from a warranty coverage if the modification does damage to a covered component. Here's an example. Customer lifts their Jeep, installs a programmer, or has a retune done. Larger tires installed. Six months later, the transmission fails and needs a rebuild. The dealership can void the powertrain warranty because the transmission failure can be attributed to the lift tires and tune. If the same vehicle came in with a failed wiper motor instead of a transmission failure, well, they obviously couldn't avoid, they couldn't avoid anything because one doesn't have anything to do with the other. See how this works? Now, in Tammy's case, things are slightly different. The dealership she uses has its own in-house performance shop that does the lift installations. That dealership will obviously cover everything because they did the modifications. If she has a powertrain issue and goes to another dealer due to being out of the area, like if the transmission had an issue, leaving it undrivable and she was in Roush Creek or something like that, well, then the other dealer may not be willing to do the work as warranty work, or they may call the area rep regarding as to whether or not to do the work as warranty. It always kinds of a gray area when modifications are done by dealers via an in-house performance shop. I'd really like to hear what Tammy's dealer has to say regarding this potential issue, as it obviously has implications for all of us Jeepers. Thanks for listening and reading. Hope this makes sense to you all. And of course, big thanks to Scott, and big thanks out there to the rest of you guys for submitting stories and suggestions for This Week in Jeep. Just like Scott, if you guys have a response to any one of our stories, by all means, please send us an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com. Well, so I, isn't that special? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Tammy. Oh, I did. I called my dealer, um, and I just asked them a few questions. And if you do your own, for, it, for them anyway, if you do your own lift and something happens to your Jeep that is not caused by your work, or the lift, it should be covered. Hmm. Now, right. if if something happens where the lift 
my lift does something to like the drivetrain, for instance, that won't, Jeep won't cover it. But my shop will because I did it with them. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's kind of a little bit what Scott was saying. With it, you know, they're going to cover it because they did the work and stuff like that. Whereas another shop may not because you know they weren't the last ones to touch it. Right. But if you know, if I got a lift and something happens to my drivetrain that has nothing to do with my lift, Jeep still will cover it. Yeah, there's there there may be service representatives out there, service technicians, uh, service managers, or whatever that may just for whatever reason have a wild hair and and <laughs> can have the power to right. not you know not count that as warranty work because oh well you know you have a lift on there so you know that right. that you know changes things or whatever the, the people who don't understand stuff you know you'll typically see that kind of thing in the IT field and I suspect in others we call that finger pointing where one yeah. <laughs> Yes. One one support person or one support group will point their finger at the other support group because neither one of them wants to, you know, shell out the beans to to cover the the warranty work on it. So you kind of learn to um, not put yourself in those situations too often and you know, make sure that it's clear and covered. So uh, how how long is the warranty on your Jeep, Tammy? Do you do you recall offhand? No, oh, it's the typical. Um Oh, you know, and I have it written down on my. Is it a hundred thousand? Is it a hundred? Yeah, miles? it's a hundred thousand. There's two different kinds. So you really have to worry for for quite a while uh, about the the warranty on it if you want to uh, have warranty. Pardon? You, so you will really will have to worry a, wh a while about the warranty on it if you indeed want to have any warranty claims, since it's uh, you know a hundred thousand miles. It should take you right. you know several years, five right. or seven years at least. Uh, to hit that mark, especially if you're going five miles an hour and four wheel low. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Take me a long time. What's up, guys? I'm Kobe. And I'm Jason. From Morgan Trail Off Road. You're listening to Jeep Talk Show. You're listening to Jeep Talk Show, the number one Jeep podcast. At my mom's house. You've heard of Jeep Hair Don't Care, right? Well, I'm here talking with people who do. Care, that is. Welcome to Jeep Hair, we care. I am here with one of my favorite people on the planet, somebody I'm very proud to know and call family, my father-in-law, Pete Patrick, a former maintenance sergeant on B-52s for the United States Air Force. Pete, what do you care about? Well, I care about the veterans in this country, particularly the disabled veterans. I'm a volunteer driver, and I take them from a clinic in Athens, Georgia, over to hospital appointments in Augusta, Georgia. We wait there for them till their appointments are over, and then we drive them back to Athens to their homes. That's really great. Hey, thanks for watching Jeep Hair We Care. Here's some more information. Coming up on Wrangler Talk, I thought I lost my ability to use that $10,000 button for the electronic disconnect. You know what? I'll tell you more in a couple of minutes. That's, a, that's an expensive button to lose control of. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> so I just want to remind you guys that uh, the Jeep Talk Show is primarily an audio, an audio podcast, but we do have the video uh, section that we do uh, live video every uh, Thursday night, 10 p.m., uh, right there on the Jeep Talk Show website. So JTS is great for listening while driving at work or at the gym or even doing that pesky yard work. You can subscribe to the podcast via iTunes, Stitcher, uh, tuned in, or directly from the Jeep Talk Show website. New episodes of the Jeep Talk Show are available uh, for download each Monday at midnight Central Time or listen directly from a smart our smartphone-enabled website. And hey, speaking of how we are broadcasting the show, our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show. You guys can check us out every Thursday, 10 p.m. Central, as we broadcast the show live. Of course, you can always head over to jeeptalkshow.com. We simulcast the show right there on the website's main page as well. Either way, guys, youtube.com slash Jeep Talk Show. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you tell a friend and get them on board as well. Such lovely music. I always think of Love Boat when I hear this. I think of Love American Style. Yeah, I do. 
Uh, you guys are going to love part two of the interview I did with Phil from uh, Max Built Off-Road, founder of the Epic Willie's Adventure and owner of Wisconsin's premier off-road fab shop. Uh, we're trying to get that out this week, guys. This part of the interview, boy, it went so long, guys, I had to divide this up into two parts. So the second part and the last part of this two-part interview covers more along of what Max Built is, how they came to be, and of course, the massive, huge, just way cool project that are doing the Wounded Soldier Jeep give back. And that was the uh, focus of the second part of this interview. Uh, very, very respectable project that they're doing, guys. Very honorable cause. And uh, if you want to find out more about that, well, by all means, check out the, check out Max Built all over the web. Check out their Facebook page. They are on YouTube if you want to see a video about what that project is all about as well. And of course, that interview will be out this week as a bonus download. Uh, and so you guys can look for that. And I highly encourage you guys to download that and spread it around. Uh, you have an update with uh, Oregon Trail Off-Road coming up, don't you? Yeah, I sure do. In fact, I have an interview locked down with those guys, a follow-up interview coming up uh, this weekend, actually. May oh, okay. 28th, I will have them back in studio uh, for a uh, follow-up interview uh, just right on the heels of uh, the last one and right before these guys are getting ready to leave here in another, well, geez, less than two months mm -hmm. uh, for, this, uh, for this huge cross-country off-road trip. And, and I'm sorry, what was that again? They're going uh, the Oregon Trail, which... Yeah, they're going to backtrack Lewis and Clark's journey um, across the U.S., the Oregon Trail. Uh, they're going to do this off-road. Uh, they have received a ton of support. Uh, a lot of thanks to you guys out there as mm -hmm. well. So um, well, they have heard, uh, this, several other people had heard that interview on the show and reached out to Oregon Trail Off-Road uh, to help out in any, any way they can. And it really uh, ended up working out really good. That's great. We're looking forward to hearing more from those guys. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? What are you talking about, man? Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? I got no idea what the heck. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Get out of my face, yo. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Underwater. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? In the bubble bath. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? No clue. And where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? While flexing on stumps. Where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show at? I would assume on the radio. The Jeep Talk Show, available on iTunes and at jeeptalkshow.com. Hey, where do you listen to the Jeep Talk Show? We'd like to know. Take a few moments and call us at 530-675-4102 and say, hey, I listen to the Jeep Talk Show doing, and then fill in the blank again, uh, interesting lies, whatever, we don't care. <laughs> this is long as it's uh, interesting, funny, or it can be accurate. Yeah, we, we'll go with accurate. We can throw a few good ones in there, right? Yeah, okay. Anyway, so uh, please uh, t take a moment, give us a call, 530-675-4102. All right, so now we get to the favorite part, except it wasn't so, so favorite last week whenever I got yeah. uh, dis, dis plain ass disrespected in a review, but uh, we, uh, we love those reviews, whether they're good or bad, because uh, the bad ones mean that we can uh, perhaps, possibly improve. So uh, let's, uh, let's get to this week's reviews. So we go, go back to the Twitter. I uh, love the Twitter. I've been getting some, uh, some recent uh, comments. Uh, especially as we're putting out these uh, Jeep commercials or the Jeep talk show commercials, if you've caught one or not. Uh, but uh, Route 16 said on uh, on Twitter, chilling on a Sunday, we recommend listening to the Jeep talk show. And that was in direct response of one of those commercials that uh, that we put out. Thanks a lot, Route 16. Josh, what's the answer to Route 16? The root That's of 16? Well, how do you get the root, the root of 16? Well, you got to multiply four and four, four <laughs> by four. <laughs> I thought that was quite clever. Yeah. Well done, Route 16. Hey, in response to sending out that episode 229 teaser video, we actually got a lot of feedback through our Twitter. Uh, Holly at Halfish12 at Jeep Talk Show will definitely start listening more. Thank you, Holly. Appreciate that. And Dave Dunsill at DD4 Cowboys with a Z at Jeep Talk Show. Oh, hell yes. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> I'll spread the word on my end here in Big Wyoming. Count on it. Thumbs up. Thanks again. Yeah, I love hearing that. We love it when you, whenever you guys uh, spread the word about the show because we ain't got no budget for advertising. So <laughs> but the only way we can do it is on social media and word of mouth. So we got this one on Facebook uh, from uh, Cameron uh, Moran. Maureen? Moran? Moreau. 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 Uh, hey there, Moreau. Jeep Talk Show. Dropping by to show some love. Great shows and info like all the different segments and topics. Five stars in my book. 
would like to see if y'all could uh, do a plug in for the off-road group I'm part of. We're here in the Hill Country Crawlers in Central Texas base group. Uh, looking for more members, aren't we all? Uh, we all <clears throat> we are all uh, only on Facebook, but we're trying to build it up. Would uh, also like to give Tony a challenge to come out to Hidden Falls and go wheeling with us. We know yeah. it's a long shot, but so, uh-huh. <laughs> we know it's a long shot. I thought it was gonna be a long drive, a long <laughs> shot. But support from y'all would be amazing. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, I, uh, as if you're a long time listener to the show, you know I have some things that I still have to uh, get done on my Jeep that uh, weekends go by and I don't work on anything. Uh, uh, thankfully, one of our other members was doing the same thing to his Jeep, so uh, I'm not the only one here doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we got one directly from an email response saying, I do enjoy the Jeep Talk Show each and every week. Keep up the good work. And that was from our friend, Uncle Buck. Uncle Buck. Oh, great. We love hearing from you guys. And uh, like I said, uh, the reviews, good or bad, uh, we really appreciate. So now we've been teasing this for a few weeks. And uh, fortunately, we are going to actually deliver this week. Uh, Yay. (laughs) Gina got out uh, on the trail and uh, showed us how to cook some things. And Josh, uh, I think you're really going to like this one because this is uh, kind of the part we've been teasing, you know, where uh, she was putting together this uh, this little, uh, I don't know, cake size sandwich type thing. My bib is uh, just me. out of reach. I just can't. It's right over there. I exactly. Think. So uh, let's uh, let's get over to that and uh, see what Gina has for us. Hey guys, I'm Gina with Boating, Boarding, and Burgers, and today we are going to hit the Silver Lake sand dunes up and do some trail food. So today we're going to do some sammies, and I'm going to show you how I make those in just a minute. We're also getting everything prepped, so all of our um, tailgating box and all of our cameras, GoPros, everything all set in our food. So we are going to see you soon. So I take a bread bowl, and I cut the top off the bread bowl, and then I hollow that out. I add some caraway caraway seeds, um, and then I add some Swiss cheese. You can go with sliced Swiss cheese, or you can also go with shredded. I then add some pastrami or corned beef, whatever you like. Next, I add some sauerkraut. Make sure that's drained. You don't want it too wet. And after the sauerkraut, I add some Thousand Island dressing. I finish it off with a bunch of either sliced or shredded Swiss cheese. And then I wrap it three layers of aluminum foil. Okay, guys, we're all set to go for our trail ride and have our picnic. If you're just going for a normal trail ride, go ahead and just use uh, your picnic basket. But if you're going to do things like cliffhanger, rusty nail, things where your Jeep's going to be completely straight up and down, you're going to want your cooler. Put everything for your picnic basket and make sure that that's strapped down. So not everything from the front goes to the back. Okay, guys, so we're all set with our Reuben bowl. You're going to let this heat. Now you just want to be really, be really careful as to where you put this. Every Jeep is different. I'm going to put it right here. It fits in really well. I don't want to put it um, near my battery. This fits well right here because we want it to kind of sit down so when this comes down, it actually compresses it. Okay, so we have this wrapped in many layers of aluminum foil and we will see you when the cheese is melty. Okay, everyone, so we've stopped for our uh, Jeep trail ride. This food is really warm, so I guarantee you this Reuben sandwich is all ready to go, so let's go and eat it. Okay, so we found our picnic table. We are all set. We are gonna watch a sunset, and we are gonna break into our Reuben sandwich bowl. Oh my goodness. Normally, this is, it can fit, you know, I'd have to say two people, maybe four. In my tailgating box, I always include a knife. So if you want to add a knife, that's fine. You know what? We're pretty rustic. So normally my husband and I will just go half and half. So look at this. You see all this cheese? Perfect. (laughs) Now we are all set on the trail. We are all done with our food and it's time to eat. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you soon. Oh, hey guys, geez. thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my Reuben uh, sandwich bowls that uh, we cooked out on the trail and the Silver Lake Sand Dunes. And join me again in June because I'm going to be doing another cooking show 
from my Jeep, and we are doing our very first ever Silver Lake Sand Dunes Jeep Invasion, June 3rd through the 5th, 2016. So I hope you join me, because I will be showing another great recipe from that event. We already have over a 1,000 people registered for the Silver Lake uh, Sand Dunes Jeep Invasion. So I'll show you another great trail food item to pack and cook while you're out Jeeping. Thanks, guys. So we don't send, uh, I, here at the uh, J JTS headquarters, we don't send the audio and video out uh, to the, the co-hosts. They actually have to watch the video through YouTube. So there's about a 30 second delay. And, and as Gina's talking there at the end, I'm watching uh, Josh mouth trying to eat the screen <laughs> as he's watching her bite into that, uh, that sandwich that she made. Didn't that it look wonderful? So damn good. Oh. Did she really cook that while she was off roading? Yes. She put Heck it yeah. in. Wow. Yep, yep. All about the prep in the beginning and a little bit of heat uh, provided by the no engine. You can do you amazing do things. Well, it's a, like that muff pot that uh, she was talking about the, yeah. uh, that they used on the um, uh, snowmobiles. Snowmobile. And uh, so you just use the heat from the engine that's taking you from point A to point B anyway. And uh, the only thing that I, I just realized, she didn't mention cooking time. Uh, you know how far I'm thinking a five hour trip might be a little too far to cook your uh, your your sandwich. Yeah, it might be a <laughs> might might be a, a crouton by the end of that. You know, yeah, but, uh, but no, you know if you if you're on the trail, you know by you know nine or ten o'clock, you know you break for lunch around noon or something like that. I mean that's that's usually how it goes out here. I mean you know everybody you know does things a little bit differently, but you know I've done the manifold burritos before and and things like that, and uh, you know warmed up some uh, some hot dogs and tin foil and. You know, I keep it basic. Now, Gina, she's taking it to another level. But wasn't it simple? But, but wasn't it simple though? I mean, what what you saw yeah, her do there no, it it really was really was, simple. She's, you know, great ingredients and and really that that mind for uh, for you know good combinations. Man, uh, that was one heck of a good looking uh, uh, a Reuben right there. Oh, and it just Man. you know, and kudos uh, to her for just going in there f face first and taking a big bite because <laughs> you could just taste it. It was so it looked so good. Oh wow. All right, Tammy, let's get over to uh, this uh, this segment that you're going to be doing for us about uh, uh, another one of them Canadians. Um, and we got this email from a Canadian Jeep girl gone Jeep crazy. My name is Natasha, a Canadian Jeep girl gone Jeep crazy. Why a Jeep? My passions for Jeep started at 16. Something about riding topless, wind in my hair with the freedom to go anywhere intrigued me. It wasn't until later in life I was established that I could afford this wonderful gift. I bought Lucy, 2012, Crush Orange Sahara Wrangler for my 41st birthday in 2015. I named her after the talented Lucille Ball. She had been by far my greatest adventure and best investment I have given myself. Lucy is complete freedom with no judgment. She doesn't care that I don't have makeup on or my hair is messy. She's happy I jumped in and turned the keys as that's when the magic and adventure begins. Life takes us in all directions, and Lucy introduced me to a lifestyle, a brother, sisterhood, an entire Jeep community of Jeep enthusiasts worldwide. I've had the privilege and honor in the past few months of becoming part of the Canadian Jeep Girls team founded by Terry Amy and made Canadian Jeep rep for Jeep Crazy, founded by Gerard Jeep Crazy Godley. I love being a Canadian Jeep girl gone Jeep crazy, but most of all, I love Lucy. I dedicate this to all the fabulous Jeepers and Jeep clubs I have met over the past year. A special shout out to my sister, Carol Thompson, and to my mentor, John Kutcher, founder of Blue Water Jeep Club Owners. That last name, Thompson, up in Canada, I've got, uh, I've got some family up in Canada on the uh, Victoria side, just a little bit north and a little bit inland of that. Uh, last name of Thompson as well, so I wonder if there's any relation. I doubt it, but you know, never know. <laughs> well, my, my Thompson side came from Canada, so maybe. Oh, I'll be darn. Maybe we're all related some way. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> damn Canadians, they're everywhere. You never, never can tell. There's, that border doesn't mean a damn thing. So, but, you know, if, if you have a story <laughs> like that, God, we'd love to share it. Yeah. Your absolutely. passion for your Jeep. So, uh, we love doing this every week. It's uh, the From the Mind of Nikki G. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And I just want to say, I've recently learned uh, through XJ Talk that uh, Fireman Ray has passed away. 
and uh, I've never met him, but I've chatted with him several times through the forum, and uh, he seemed like a nice guy. He was always willing to help me out, and I considered him a friend I've uh, never met yet. And uh, so in, in honor of Fireman Ray, uh, Nikki G is going to observe a moment of silence this week. And I'll uh, continue with the funny next week. All right, boys and girls, I'll uh, chat you later. And you have a good one. Bye. So he's going to step it up and they're going to start being funny. That's great. <laughs> Don't laugh. What's wrong with you, man? Try not to. <laughs> Hey, you know, we love hearing from all of you, so be sure and call our voicemail at 530-675-4102, or you can jump over to our website, thejeeptalkshow.com, and leave us a message. Just click the leave just click the leave voicemail button on the right-hand side of the screen. So this is a really cool idea that t- uh, Tim came up with. Well, I don't want to spoil it. I'll let Tim tell you what it is. Hey, guys. It's Tim from Torrance. Um I live here in Los Angeles, and the traffic is getting worse and worse. And the other day, I was stuck on the 405 parking lot, which is one of our major freeways here in Southern California. And um, the traffic was creeping along about five miles an hour, and I kept having to engage and disengage my my first gear. And I kind of got tired of, of always shifting. So what I did is I threw it in four-wheel drive low, and took my foot off the gas pedal, <laughs> and and I just crept along at a really slow pace, which was really um, great because I didn't have to monkey around with the, the shifting gears. And um, I was going straight, so I wasn't turning, wasn't messing up my tires. And I'm wondering what you guys think about that uh, that type of uh, maneuver. Um, and I know gears that don't get used a lot, you know, um, uh, need to be lubricated uh, once in a while. So what do you guys think about throwing your Jeep into four-wheel low just to creep along, to lubricate everything, and uh, not have to mess with the clutch all the time in traffic? Anyway, keep up the good work. Talk to you later. Well, Tammy, I saw a light bulb, bulb uh, over the top of your head. What do you think about that? I thought that was pretty cool, but then I'm like, but everyone always says you're not supposed to put it in four-wheel low when you're on asphalt. So, yeah, there's, wow. there's, there's a lot of arguments to that. Uh, I mean, especially if you have lockers, you know, it's definitely a no, no dry cement. You know, if it's wet cement, you're a little bit better off, but uh, th- this isn't something that jives with me really well. I mean, uh, Tim's definitely thinking outside the box here and yeah, it does work. It's not something I would do very often, and it's not, certainly not something I would do very long, and I wouldn't do it in anywhere else but a s- absolute dead straight you know, shot. I would, not a lot of lane changes, not a lot of you know, uh, snaky, curvy roads or oh, anything no. like that, um, but just you know, ultimately not a good idea for low on dry pavement. Now, that being said, there's a trick that truckers do that you'll see a lot in traffic. They'll just space themselves out about 12, 15 car lengths, Put it in first gear, let off the gas, let the idle do the rest. And uh, as long as you give yourself a you know good decent amount of car length in front of you, and and uh, and you you know you're watching several cars up ahead, uh, you just you know a little bit of uh, throttle, a little bit of maintenance throttle, and uh, you rarely have to ever have to touch the clutch or the uh, brake pedal. That's what I do in traffic. I got a 40 mile commute one way at every major freeway here in the Portland metro area, and believe me, that first gear clutch gets tiring real fast. Oh yeah. So uh, I don't personally see a problem with this, uh, but the, the only thing I could see a problem with is if you did need to maneuver and you didn't realize that you still had it in four wheel low, uh, and you started trying to, I'm um, I say realized just because the, the the maneuver doesn't allow you the time to to do anything about it. Now you're trying to steer that Jeep, and it's going to be steering you uh, back to that straight line, and you uh, potentially uh, risk stretching the chain. As far as lubricating. I don't know of any um, modern day Jeep that is an actual Jeep, uh, so that would exclude the the, the Cherokee Trailhawk and et cetera. Uh, a Jeep with a uh, a uh, front drive shaft. I'm sorry, yeah, not a front drive shaft, a front axle, a uh, solid axle front. Uh, but they all should be lubricated because they're always turning. Doesn't matter because we don't have uh, uh, hubs that are unlockable. Now, that is a potential for you 
if you wanted to put in uh, hubs that you could manually lock and unlock, you could have them unlocked, put that thing in four wheel low, and now effectively you're doing two wheel drive low and you wouldn't have any problems with your steering. Or if you got a big chunk of change laying around, you could buy the Terraflex two low kit. Uh, Steve 4.3 LXJ recommended that in our chat room. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a, oh, did he good. So uh, I like it when I'm on the same page with Steve. It makes me feel good about myself. Um, so uh, yeah, so if you're in two wheel drive low, it's a it's a perfect solution and uh, it's pretty cool. And uh, you can always stand it up on uh, the back wheels if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it, doesn't it, when it's in low? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get over to our uh, first of three Johnny Joliet the voicemails. Hey, XJ Talk. It's Joliet Johnny. Uh, don't know if you can hear me well. I kind of destroyed my phone, rebuilt it while on vacation in Disney. They do let you ship things from Amazon. Oh. Have to hit the affiliate oh. link because very, very limited internet access. Uh, I drove the Renegade down there, about 30 miles south of Chicago. So, you know, I got a good test drive out of it. Uh, yeah, it's it's not bad on the interstate. It's horrible around town. There's there's a delay when you hit the, the gas pedal. Uh, it's a drive by wire. That might be it. I wonder if there's an upgrade to fix that. It's a cable. Uh, <laughs> we we ended up getting home. And I really wanted to drive my Jeep, you know, the XJ real Jeep. And, uh, yeah, um, that one has acceleration, but compared to the Renegade, boy, do the brakes suck. I'm definitely going to look into the Grand Cherokee brake upgrade now. Um, I don't know. That's about all I got. Okay. All right. Well, I had an opportunity to to, uh, to read the the chat room, and I see Steve was actually talking about a two wheel drive low kit actually making a change inside the MP two thirty one transfer case. Right. Not, That's not a lock up. Two low kit. You add that in, and it gives you a two wheel drive low range option. Yep. I was I was thinking that it was just uh, you guys were saying the same thing I was saying, but two different things. One's uh, front locking hubs, manual locking hubs, so you can. Uh, disconnect the drivetrain uh, to the uh, differential and uh, from the tires and wheels and the differential in the front. So I uh, just want to make that clarification real quick. Well, Johnny Juliet, Renegade. What more can you say about that? <laughs> <laughs> so let's get over to our next Johnny Juliet uh, voicemail. This is Juliet, Johnny. Forgot to add, uh, the Renegade did not come with a spare tire. I got a air compressor, and a plug kit. (laughs) And I bought a rim and a tire. I took my Harbor Freight. I recently cleaned floor jacks for that (laughs) behind the driver's seat and put a tire rack in with it. And, uh, yeah, my in-laws came with us on this vacation, and they were making fun of me because, you know, I'm I'm this crazy prepper. And, oh, you have roadside assistance. Why, Why don't you just wait for that? Well, thing is, you know, I, I care about your daughter so much that, you know, I'd rather get us off the side of the road as quickly as possible because <laughs> I don't know if the truck driver has had enough sleep or if that guy coming down the interstate is drunk and is driving on the shoulder and, you know, we're waiting for roadside assistance, so yeah, things could happen. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know why they can't put spare tires in cars anymore. It's just dumb. All right. Hey. Have you seen the size of a Renegade? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why. Although it sounds like you were able to retrofit one in there. Uh, also, too, it's a damn sight cheaper for a plug kit and an air compressor, isn't it? I mean, you're talking about what? Uh, Thirty bucks, forty bucks. So anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, roadside assistance. I. I like it, but I like it as an option, not as a, uh, a have to have. Uh, yeah, and, not a, not a crutch, no, not a, not a necessity, but uh, yeah, you know, good, nice to be prepared. And when you call AAA and you and you give them uh, grid coordinates uh, where to show up to pick you up because you're <laughs> five miles out onto the trail, they they get cranky on you. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. How would you know? I 
recently cleaned my garage out enough to get my uh, 95 G Civic in, and I put the Lancer there just for reference next to it. Uh, it's roughly a three-car garage. Uh, I figure car I'm working on plus parts car in the second hole. Third hole is workbench, tools. You get the idea. I'm, uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm kind of thinking about building the, the Civic right now because, oh, it was not fun to put this thing in here because the second door, uh, <laughs> yeah, I should have made a YouTube video of how annoying it was to get that one up. And, uh, I, I tried to adjust the spring, um, call a professional for that one because, yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I broke a Craftsman extension, and I'm just so glad it didn't hit me. Probably would have gone in my skin. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, should I continue on the mall crawl build on my Red XJ or build the super gas mileage Civic? Uh, I, I'm more building my XJ for show, so hence the mall crawler. All right, that's all I got today. Hey. Ooh, red jeeps are sexy. <laughs> Thank you, God. <laughs> Tony's uh, Tony's uh, advice there for you. Well, Juliet, I, I don't know. I'm you know I've I've got a long commute, so I'm all about that uh, about that gas saver. Uh, if you uh, if it sounds like you have a Lancer as well, I don't know if that's your daily driver or if that's uh, you know significant others or whatever. Um, if you've got a, a you know a super gas efficient project that is easily finished, you know, a couple months worth of work, a few weekends here and there, something like that, I'd say go for it. If it's a two or three year project, and finish off the Jeep first or something like that. You know, you can always, uh, you know, find something else to drive in the meantime if you need a gas saver or something like that, you know, a little $750 auction car or something like that. The gas money you save in two months just driving that thing, probably pay for your uh, Civic project. Sounds good to me. Hey guys, LTW Wright Knives are handcrafted in Ohio with the finest locally sourced materials. They build everything from everyday carry to bushcraft and even overland specific. Everything that LTWK builds comes with a lifetime guarantee and is designed from the ground up to be a solid working knife. Each piece is constructed with survival in mind. Knives with a proven international pedigree have been there and back. Bushcraft, hunting, camping, overland, and everyday carry models are all available. Their new Bushcrafter HC is an excellent example of an everyman knife able to do everything from help get the campfire started to skinning some game. Being made from 330 seconds, 1075 steel. With a convex edge, it will resharpen easily in the field. These heirloom quality pieces will outlast your adventure. So plan well, drive safely, and carry an LTWK. Find out more online at ltwrightknives.com. L-T-W-R-I-G-H-T knives.com. Shut up and listen. Shut up. So shut up. You don't shut up. Shut up, Shane. Hey, (laughs) shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler Talk. It's time for G-Mama. Hey guys, last week on episode 229 of the Jeep Talk Show, I showed Tony and Josh and all of you a picture of my new Jeep parts under my Jeep. And I needed a little help identifying those shiny new parts. And as Josh was pointing out some of the parts and explaining what they were and the need for them, he mentioned the sway bar disconnects. And later on um, that week, it got me thinking and I'm like, oh my God, yikes, does that mean my sway bar electronic disconnect button is still working? So I was thinking, oh my Lord, I'm going to have to get out of my Jeep, the comforts of my Jeep, and crawl underneath it to disconnect my sway bar. I was like really upset thinking, God, that would suck if that I lost that option to push the button to disconnect my sway bar. So I called up Chuck at Adams Extreme Motorsports and Um, I actually talked to another person, and yes, my sway bar disconnect button works. Um, I was told that I have what's called a flexing sway bar. It is the opposite of your typical sway bar, and it's a solid links where a coupler pops out and lets the sway bar flex, and I'm told that it actually flexes more than your typical sway bar. So um, learn something new every day. And I just want to let you guys know, you can check out my blog at www.jeepmama.com where I talked about this. And next week, I'm going to be sharing my Molly um, panel um, storage 
solution I have on my tailgate that I installed. And also I'm going to be revealing my new Jeep tattoo and much, much more um, on my blog at www.jeepmama.com. Tony and Josh. Well, looking forward to that. That's for sure. Does it say uh, mom with uh, big tires on the side? <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, no, nope, not not even close. <laughs> well, all right, people, we got to get a pool started as to what Tammy's Jeep tattoo yeah, is yeah. and its location. The winner is going to receive. Oh, no. No. Yeah, the location it would be a good one too. <laughs> uh oh, you know what? The that winner get out will of hand receive. Real quick, I'm, I'm here, afraid. <laughs> I got it right here, Josh. The winner will receive these two um, insulators for your D rings. Actually, one because one of them was stolen. No, never mind. No, but you, I will. I will give you these. These isolators, they're isolators. Wait, I want to talk about that sway bar disconnect for a second because there's a lot of stuff floating around about that a lot of people don't really know about. And all you JK owners out that are, that are um, going to be getting into some wheeling and stuff, you probably want to get, uh, get out your pencils and number, number two pencils and a little piece of paper because I'm about to take you to school. Ooh. I don't know all if right. I can understand all this. The electronic sway bar. Uh, that it's on the JKs. It's otherwise known as the Smart Bar. That's a little trademark name that they have for that. It's a very interesting design and certainly uh, certainly has its benefits. Unfortunately, it also has a lot of um, a lot of things that happens to it. It is prone to failure. Uh, okay. There's you can look online and virtually any forum is plagued with people talking about the various types of failures that happen with these. Now, the most common two failures are the seal of the uh, of the actuator housing. Uh, where the gears are, where the shift fork resides, and gets in there, and things get uh, gets kind of rusty pretty quick. Um, the other one is the electronic module that controls the electronic solenoid. They put entirely way too much circuitry in there for a simple re voltage reversal solenoid, and that causes problems a bunch of times. It's also tied into the TIPM module or the um, total. Uh, oh, I had it on the tip. I used to know this. Oh, the uh, no. Uh, total immersive uh, power module. Uh, that's what it was. Uh, it, pretty much everything that's in the Jeep runs through this thing, including the smart bar. And if it takes that out, well, you're screwed. And it's happened before, so don't think it can't happen to you. Uh, the problems with electronic sway bar, they can occur at any time, whether on the trail or off the trail. Uh, signs of trouble, um, slow response, and the indicator light flashes erratically on the dash. So look out for that. If you have that going on, chances are uh, you already have some issues. Um, typically, it can't be serviced. There is a couple of uh, videos that I found online of people taking theirs apart and putting it back together, cleaning up the gears, regreasing things, um, you know, cleaning up that shift fork and whatnot. Um, there are other people out there that uh, just replace it all together. Uh, they run about $1,500 for the whole unit. It's because it's not really serviceable. They don't sell just the motor itself or just the electronic control module. Now, you might be able to find one on eBay or something like that, but... Let's face it, it's probably going to go bad again sometime in the future. Um, if you want a replacement, genuine Mopar online, Quadratech, 1800 bucks plus. Also, no labor to put any of this stuff in. So, you know, things get real expensive real quick. So when you say no labor, you mean that's not including the cost that's of labor? That's not including, yeah, the, the cost of you taking it down to the dealership and having them put it in or to a local mechanic and having them put it in. Uh, you know, I don't know what book hours on that is, but you can imagine that, you know, 60 to 80 to 100 bucks an hour it's going to take probably a good couple few hours. Uh, and I'm just guessing there, guys. Mm -hmm. So um, the new Sway Bar, if you buy one brand new like that, it's going to be just as vulnerable to failure as the original. So, you know, you're really no better off. Now, the good news to all this is, is that there are mods available. Now, there's a few people out there that swear by the thumb, thumb screw method. Uh, now, this involves a little bit more of a fabrication background. You do have to make a replacement plate uh, for where the electronic module is and basically use a thumb screw to engage and disengage the, uh, the cog pin, which connects the two halves of the, uh, of the sway bar together. Um, the other option is to go after market, and there are a few cable-operated options out there, which take the electronics out and put in just a cable actuation. That is going to last the life of the vehicle. So if you are already having some issues or you want to avoid issues with your electronic sway bar disconnect on your JK, well, then uh, take a look at the aftermarket or start getting out your, uh, your pencils and start sketching out a little bit of fabrication work because uh, you got your work cut out for you. Now, Tammy, you um, last week started getting into some of the components of your new lift kit, and we needed to identify a couple of things. And uh, this right. week, we have that uh, same sort of thing going on, don't we? 
Yes, we're looking at my rear this week of my Jeep. Wait a minute. Uh, I was told, I was told this is a yeah. PG-13 show. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, there Go there were some shiny new parts in the back of my Jeep underneath, and I was like, I wonder. Some of them, I think I know what they are, um, but I'm just I just wanted to double check. Sure. Okay, so what we're looking at, folks, for our audio only, for our podcast listeners, is we're looking at a picture taken from the driver's side rear tire looking towards the axle of the rear of the Jeep. And uh, we see most of the components there on uh, primarily the, the driver's side corner. Um, and she's got four components highlighted. And uh, the four components that we're going to go, let's go down, down the list uh, here, Tammy. Um, number one is what's going to be called a sway bar spacer. And what that does is because your lift or your axle is now farther away from the Jeep itself, that sway bar, which connects your you know, opposite ends of the, uh, of the axle to the frame, giving them a, a point to reduce sway of the vehicle during a heavy turn, um, since that distance was, uh, was increased uh, and this kit didn't come with new links, they just basically spaced off the whole bar. Um, perfectly fine with that. It doesn't see a lot of force. Um, you know, probably wouldn't be a good idea to start drifting with this Jeep uh, with that kind of setup. But uh, nonetheless, uh, that's what that's what that's for. Now, number three, I'm kind of skipping around here a little bit, is the sway bar itself. Uh, now, you might be, I can't tell if you're pointing to the bar or the large black thing that's behind it. If that's the case, the large black thing that's behind it is an extended bump stop. And uh, the number four piece um, that is uh, above the little white nobule thing right there. That is also a, an extended bump stop spacer. Uh, and that now those weren't there before, the bump right? Bump stop from the frame side out a little bit further. I'd say the bump stop was. I don't know. Uh, I don't see that thing at number three that you were talking about. The, the, Josh. the square. Yeah, I was talking about the black. Okay, so the, the black, black is, is kind of in the in the background a little bit further. Yeah. It's a darker. Um, they look like square basically it's, it's a stack of rubber is what. Oh, is. so that is the extended bump stop. They just built it up from the axle uh, up right. instead of uh, putting so another bump stop what coming down. A, yeah, a spacer on the frame side as well, um, but uh, I can't I can't tell for sure. Now there is another piece that's right behind the number one, and that is um, the uh, the brake relocation bracket. The brake. Uh, uh, cable relocation bracket mm -hmm. that just spaces the uh the, the brake line down further so that you still retain your flex without limiting yourself on the brake line now number two the only thing that we didn't get to in this picture um is going to be the track bar relocation bracket now when you raise the vehicle obviously an adjustable track bar has to come into play or you have to relocate the mounting point because if you just left it as is well as you lift that vehicle it's going to pull the axle off to one side uh, so this helps correct that and gives you, um, looks like maybe a couple of uh, mounting options for, for dialing that in. I'm sure they've already done that. So were you planning on going, uh, going through the things that she could do to get rid of this crap? <laughs> well, um, if you wanted to get rid of some of this, you could buy an adjustable rear track bar. Now, I know Metal Cloak makes one. I also know it is a pain in the ass to install. Uh, it, it was probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to, had to install. But that was on a TJ. A JK might be a little bit different. Um, now, why would I want to get extended, rid of this stuff? I'm sorry, say that again. Why would I want to get rid of this stuff? Well, there's just another way to an, another way to go about it. Now, I don't like relocation brackets because, and this one, granted, is very very strong. It looks just fine. Uh, it doesn't look like anything that you're you're ever going to have to worry about. I prefer not bolting stuff onto other stuff to create another mounting point. Right. Um, it's it's. Same thing with the sway bar extension, um, that, that spacer. Uh, it, it's just, it's not the best way to do it. It accomplishes it, accomplishes it very well. It just, there's, there's just better ways to go about doing Why it. Why have two or three things in the mix when you only need one thing to do it right? That's the go. way I look at it. Very well put, Tony. Thank you. Uh, also, too, um, doesn't she want to disconnect that rear sway bar when she's off road? Most people do. Um, you can get away without it. Um, well, I don't yeah, know. If you this can. You can also off road without di di without disconnecting your sway bar up front. But you could also roll the Jeep if you don't have that that tire dropping. Yeah. So a lot a lot of uh, Wrangler owners will go will opt for rear sway bar disconnects, and it's just like the front disconnects, the JKS disconnects, or Rough Country or whatever, where you reach underneath, you pull a pin, you move the right. the the end links up out of the way, secure them to a spot on the frame or something, and now. The axle in the back is free to float around, um, you know, articulate a lot easier, I should mm -hmm. say. Uh, so in this case, I, you know, I would need to see 
basically the front side of the axle or you know another another angle um, to see if she had if if this kit came with uh, with disconnects for the rear sway bar. Something tells me no. And Tammy, that is something that I would definitely put towards the top of your short list because once you can get that rear sway bar disconnected, um, you're going to notice a, a, a massive increase in articulation, especially in the rear. Yeah, and that's what I'm looking at. This um, the spacer deal. They put a spacer in there for the sway bar. I'd get rid of that thing uh, and and put on some uh, adjustable. Uh, what are they called? In links. Uh, yeah, just adjustable sway bar end links. Yeah, sway bar and end sell links. those for the JK. And then uh, with the pins, so you can pull the pins out and get rid of that big uh, shiny piece of metal there. That and the the sway bar will will be back up there where where it was to start with, um, right. which isn't it, which isn't a major deal. The major thing is being able to disconnect that so you get the articulation when you're off road. I mean, this but is I wasn't this able isn't to disconnect it before. Right, but right. but but you lifted it and you take it off road. So you want the best uh, possible situation, and the best possible situation will be disconnecting front and rear sway bars. It's going to give you the most articulation, and it's going to let your, uh, and correct me this on this, Josh, it's going to allow your body to stay the levelest as you're going over uh, very uh, different terrain, side-to-side -side terrain, rock on one side, no rock on the other, or maybe a ditch on the other. It's going to allow your body to stay level and less less roll and this makes it a lot easier to get over things. And then the yeah. other thing, uh, the track bar is probably not a, a major deal, no. but, but again, I don't see a reason to put in a, a bracket whenever you can get an adjustable uh, track bar to go in there. And it will be a lot heavier duty. If you get, you know, if you get one that's heavier duty, it'll be a lot so heavier an adjustable duty. track bar instead of what instead you're seeing in my pictures. Number two. Uh, yes. Correct. So, yeah. and this is uh, Tammy, the, uh, the, the sway bar stuff, with a little direction from somebody who's, you know, like maybe CPO or something like that, somebody who's mechanically inclined, this is definitely something that you could do. All you would need is a socket set. Yeah, yeah, to, it's, it's to, real, it's to, real simple. Yeah, to to swap out the 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 sway bar stuff. It's, and then and then at that point, you could sell this stuff on Craigslist to somebody who's looking to you know put piece together a lift or something like that, recoup some of your cost. Um, that's how I usually do things. But uh, it's not a difficult procedure, but it is something that will give you a lot more performance off-road as far yeah. as the way that your suspension works. And, and I just got to say, I don't want to burn any bridges here or any brid bridges that haven't been built yet, but I got to say, I think you paid $1,800 for this kit, and, and this is what it came with. I'm a little surprised by that. Uh, I, I would expect to at least have um, some uh, fixed uh, sway bar links that would go in there instead of a a big ass block of metal that pushes the the sway bar down. I mean, you know, maybe there's some reason for doing that that I'm not aware of, uh, other than it's just cheaper to do it that way. Yeah, very well could be. Well, Tammy, I hope that uh, has answered some questions. It probably has also raised a lot more questions than, uh, than we've does. probably answered, but. Uh, <laughs> Always does. <laughs> but hey, guys, um, all you Jeepers out there, if you guys have a tech question that you would like answered here on the show, by all means, shoot me an email. And hey, the more picks, the better as well to go along with that. Send that email to info at jeeptalkshow.com with the subject line, Tech Talk. Okay, I guess it's my product review. Sorry, I was reading some of the comments in the chat room about. Chat room can be uh, distracting. I know. Especially I know. if there's a silly ass name in there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so... I, you know, I told you I, was, I put my Molly um, panel on my tailgate, and there's still stuff that lays around in my trunk of my Jeep, and I'm like, I need to, to have that tied down. So I'm trying out this cargo net that I bought on Amazon, and I went to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon to buy this, so hopefully it'll pop up. But it's the Bell Automotive Cargo Net, and it's 42, 45 inches by 24 inch cargo net that stretches to 60 inches, and it's for superb storage, you know, like if you have sports equipment, groceries, that sort of thing. But I have Jeep stuff in mind. So it also comes with mounting equipment, but I'm testing out um, hooking it up to some four mounting points in the, the rear of my Jeep. So I'm going to do a blog post on this after I test this out. Um, and I will check back with you guys in a couple of weeks to let you know how this works and I'll have pictures to show you. Um, but, but you can go to amazon.com and check it out. It's the Bell Automotive 22-1-3365-3-8 cargo net. Yeah, those cargo nets are nice. And don't forget, uh, before you purchase anything at amazon.com, uh, 
Go to jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon. That'll take you right over there. And then any purchase that you make will get a, a few cents, a small percentage of uh, whatever the purchase is. And it doesn't cost you a penny more. Uh, the uh, I don't know if it's Amazon or the seller or they split it. I don't know. But the money Stick comes from the, the man, folks. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the, the money doesn't come from you. It, all they want is your business. And uh, because we're directing you over there, uh, we get a little something out of it. So uh, jeeptalkshow.com slash Amazon. Well, guys, let's get over to Wheeling Where We always like to know uh, where we can wheel, and uh, Josh is going to let us know where that is right now. Yeah, guys, this is uh, something I've been uh, hounding you guys about for a couple of few weeks now, and uh, one more week here, guys. The Bantam Jeep Association presents the 2016 Bantam Jeep Heritage Festival. The reason why I am uh, bringing this up so often, guys, is this is a world record-breaking event. It's Now, it's happening June 10th through the 12th, at Cooper's Lake Campground near Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania. The festival is a Jeep-only event, and all drivers must be 18 years of age. Now, last year, guys, this thing had over 20,000 attendees. And like I said, this is a world record-holding event and having the largest parade of Jeeps ever recorded. Now, if you want to see, or better yet, be a part of something like that, by all means, put this in your calendar and head over to BantamJeepFestival.com for more information. The Bighorn, Bighorn Mountain Crawlers will be holding the second annual Bighorn Mountain Crawlers 4x4 and UTV show on Sunday, May 29th, 2016 at Plains Tire in Sheridan, Wyoming. Guys, this is one that you want to help out and, and go see them. Be a part of this event as well. Being a part of local events like this, make sure that they can bring you a bigger and better show next year. And it's time for a Jeep Club shout out. The Woodlands Wobblers from Salem, Alabama. They have an Instagram account. People can follow their shenanigans over at Instagram.com slash Woodlands underscore Warblers underscore O-R-C. That's W-A-R-B-L-E-R-S underscore O-R-C. Big thanks to Gary W. Perkins for that shout out. And once again, a big shout out to the Woodlands Warblers from Salem, Alabama. Thanks, guys, for tuning into the show. And hey, don't forget, Jeep Junkies, wherever you guys are wheeling, if you pack it in, make sure you pack it out. Let's leave our outdoor recreation spots in as good, if not better condition than they were when we arrived. And always remember to tread lightly. Stay on designated trails and don't wheel where you're not supposed to. If you'd like to learn more about the Tread Lightly principles, head over to www.treadlightly.org. That's it for this week, guys. Hey, I want to start uh, hearing from more of those Jeep clubs out there. I don't care if you how many members you got. Let us know. And uh, hey, we'll give you guys a plug just like we did with the uh, Salem Wall Warblers there. Uh, Woodlands Warblers, rather, from Salem, Alabama. Um, by all means, send us an email to info at jeeptalkshow.com to get your club showcased on the show. Boy, hey, Jeepers, we, we know stole. you guys are making purchases all the time. We see it in our Amazon You Bought What every month. So the next time you guys order something for your Jeep, make sure you ask the business if they know about the Jeep Talk Show. If you're buying a product or a service from that vendor because of a review or a discussion you heard here on the show, let them know. If they haven't heard about us yet, be sure and tell them about the one and only Jeep Talk Show. Boy, we sure do uh, enjoy all the Twitter interaction, the Facebook interaction you guys have been giving us. Uh, I know... Uh, Tammy, you see a lot more Tammy over on uh, Google Plus on the not not the Hangouts, yeah, Google Plus. And uh, geez, Tammy, didn't you tell us the other day you've got like five million views now on your Google Plus account? Yeah, over five million. What, it uh, might have even be higher than that. What do you? Yeah. What do? You, what is it that you go by over there on Google Plus? Is it Jeep Mama or? Um, yeah, just Jeep Mama. So uh, go look, uh, Tammy, Tammy up. Dash Jeep Mama. Yeah, just go look uh, over there for Tammy Jeep Mama on Google Plus and uh, give her a, four, a few more reviews because Lord knows yeah, she 5. needs 9. them. Yeah, five point nine. I'm almost at six. Oh well, good. You're not following it. <laughs> I checked around. And I think NASA had a billion. So uh, that's uh, you're in good company. There you go. Anyway, uh, check us out on Twitter. You can find us uh, at Jeep Talk Show. Uh, the uh, the Facebook. You know, if you if, whatever it is, if you put a slash jeep talk show behind it you can probably find us instagram facebook uh we're uh, we're on tuned in now which isn't social media it's where you can go listen so uh we were there before as xj talk show uh, couldn't quite get things changed so i just had them add the whole damn show <laughs> so now that you'll actually see xj talk show out there and jeep talk show so just go over there to tune in and leave us some reviews uh itunes uh, tuned in stitcher uh we'd love to hear what you like what you don't like Hey, and hear more of me over at thevoiceofjosh.com. You guys have a great Jeep week. See you, you later. Uh, and you'll and you'll never guess why. And you'll never guess why.
Okay. Feel free to retype anything, Tammy. Remember, you know, you never have to, right. to stick with what I have written on the screen. I'll never if guess you can say, If you want to say it differently, by all means, type it in the way it comes out of your mouth, how it would normally come out of your mouth. Josh will think less of you if you do, though. I know. <laughs> He'll take offense. <laughs> oh, you're hilarious. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. All right. In three, two, one, go.